Hey bitches, it's me Paula V, and this week on Dirty Science, we're talking about toxoplasmosis. That parasitic cat shit that creates crazy cat lady. Wow, if you think about it, it really wasn't Smelly Cat's fault. <laughs> A 2012 Atlantic article by Kathleen McCullough told the story of how this parasite was discovered, how it works, and its effect on populations. That article was so thorough that honestly this video is just going to be kind of a summary of it with some added parts. Get it Kathleen, your writing's compelling as fuck! She tells the story of how Jarsala Flager, which sounds like a drink that's also a slur, was a Czech scientist who in the 1990s started to feel like his brain was being controlled by a parasite. Toxoplasma gondii, also known as T. gondii or Toxo is a single-celled organism, a protozoan, a microbe, a parasite that causes the condition known as toxoplasmosis. Toxo is especially a threat to people with weakened immune systems and to pregnant women who could pass it on to their fetus. Pretty ironic considering fetuses are themselves parasites. That's my food you're eating. That's not food for my baby. That's snacks I leave in my stomach for later. It is now believed that Toxo is responsible for the dementia seen in patients with AIDS during the 1980s HIV AIDS crisis. Healthy patients exposed to Toxo usually fight it off while experiencing only flu-like symptoms, and then it lays dormant in their brain cells in the form of oocysts, or cysts, that house the parasites for part of their life cycle. These cysts have thick walls, just like me after the last time he walked out. The CDC states that, in the United States, it is estimated that 11% of the population, six years and older, have been infected with Toxoplasma, but in various places throughout the world, it has been shown that more than 60% of some populations have been infected. This is possibly due to differences in food and water preparation, but also because oocysts survive better in hot and humid climates with lower altitudes. So like, uh, like India then? Like India where my family's from, where I like go visit sometimes when it's hot and humid, like there, that's where it's... Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Totally fine. India. Toxo can only reproduce inside of cats. So while other animals such as rodents, pigs, and cattle can pick up toxo from the soil, it does not reproduce inside of these other species. Humans can pick up toxo from litter boxes, drinking water contaminated by cat feces, eating unwashed vegetables, or eating undercooked meat. Which is why I just stick to candy. Candy. At least I was the one who gave myself diabetes. It can also, in rare cases, be spread through organ donation or blood transfusion, and it can be spread from mother to fetus. But it otherwise cannot be spread from human to human as far as we know. Still, at some point, this parasite needs to get back into cats in order to reproduce. And this is why it is believed that Toxo has evolved to change connections within brains in order to manipulate its host animals to get back into cats. This type of behavior altering parasite is not unheard of. Toxo can be compared to the rabies virus, which causes its host to become enraged. While the virus migrates from the host's nervous system into its saliva, thereby allowing the rabies virus to be transferred via bite to another host. Parasitic wasps have gotten spiders to protect the wasps young by getting the spiders to build a special nest for them. Flatworms take over ants' bodies, causing them to sacrifice themselves in order to get the flatworm into a larger mammal where it will thrive. So does Toxo change human behavior? Flager conducted personality tests on infected and uninfected human hosts. As compared to men not infected with the parasite, men that were infected became more introverted, suspicious, oblivious to others' opinions of them, and inclined to disregard rules. While women became the opposite, more outgoing, trusting, image conscious, and rule abiding as compared with uninfected women. Crazy cat ladies dressed better. Crazy cat dudes had rumbly old clothes. Flager thought these differences between the sexes may have actually reflected on the men and women's ability to deal with anxiety and that Toxa was actually affecting their anxiety. Perhaps the differences were because women look towards the community to deal with anxiety while men look inwards. Wow, even while living with fucking parasites, women continue to thrive. We probably know how to deal with parasites because we're so used to dealing with men. Ooh, can't wait till this one hits Reddit. Come at me boys, but please, shower first. Y'all might be suffering from a touch of the toxos. In general, Flager found a correlation between toxo infection and a decrease in superego strength, or the willingness to accept group moral standards. He also found that there were slower reaction times with those infected with the parasite. And he found a correlation between men infected with the parasite and higher rate of traffic accidents. Other studies have also corroborated this traffic accident correlation. Oh, so maybe Asians aren't bad at driving? We just come from hot and humid climates where Toxo thrives? Thank you. 
Infected men have been found to have higher levels of testosterone. And higher levels of testosterone are actually correlated with weak ass immune systems. This parasite is increasing your testosterone so that it decreases your immune system so it can spread so it can eventually make more parasites. Women actually find those men with higher testosterone more attractive, which makes them want to breed with those men more, which could indirectly lead to them having infected babies. What I'm saying is real men eat cat shit. How else does it change behavior? Both Robert Sapowski and Joanne Webster found that rats infected with Toxo became less cautious around cats and more attracted to cat urine. Their number one predator's urine. That's like if I were to be attracted to my number one predator. Dick. Oh wait. Webster called this phenomenon fatal feline attraction. Webster also found that the supposedly dormant cysts filled with toxo were all over the rat brain, with more cysts found in the areas responsible for pleasure and anxiety, indicating that the parasite might be trying to get everywhere in order to get to those areas responsible for those emotions. Kind of like my therapist asking too many damn questions just to figure out my trigger. Oh, we have fun. After working with Sapowski, a neurologist named Ajay Vyas found cysts in infected rat testicles and semen, and found that these cysts would move into the female rat's womb, infect about 60% of their pups and then travel to the female rat brain as well. Once males were infected with it, 75% of the uninfected females wanted to spend more time with those male rats. Again, real rats eat cat shit. That means this shit could be an STD in humans too. Ah, remember how we said we didn't know if it was transferred any other ways? They don't know. They're still studying it. So how does this cat pee thing work in humans? Infected men like the smell of cat pee, whereas infected women find it even grosser than women who weren't infected. Other animal urine was tested and there was no difference between uninfected and infected humans' reactions to this urine. Meaning that this is cat specific and therefore likely due to the wants of Toxo. Toxo also increases the amount of dopamine, a neurotransmitter in your brain. Dopamine is found in pathways responsible for fear, pleasure, and attention. There is increased dopamine in patients with schizophrenia and medicine used to treat schizophrenia block this dopamine. When they treated Toxo with these antipsychotics that are normally used to treat schizophrenia, it stunted the growth of Toxo. And applying these medicines to rats infected with Toxo actually eliminated the rat's feline fatal attraction. Flayer and his colleagues also found that 12 out of 44 people diagnosed with schizophrenia had reduced gray matter in their brain, which directly correlated with those infected with Toxo. The implications are terrifying. This means that Toxo could potentially trigger schizophrenia in people susceptible to it. Researchers found that for most infected people, behavior differences once infected are subtle. But psychiatrist E. Fuller Torrey found that there was an increase in the rates of schizophrenia in the 18th century, right around when people were keeping cats as pets for the first time. Torrey, as well as their colleague Robert Yolkin, found schizophrenia is two to three times more common in people infected with Toxo than not. So then why do people say schizophrenia is genetic if it can be affected by this parasite? Well, some people theorize that what's actually passed down genetically is weaker immune systems, which then allows Toxo to have more of an effect on people with weak immune systems rather than if they had a better immune system passed down genetically. In addition to that, a 2011 study of 20 European countries found an increased rate of suicide amongst women that were infected with Toxo. These studies have opened the door to see how other infections could affect our behavior. For example, people who got the flu vaccine wanted to be more social than they normally would in the few days after they received it. People with AIDS and syphilis were more likely to feel higher sexual urges towards the end of their lives, similar to how people at the beginning of a herpes outbreak feel. These are patterns that could potentially be linked to these infections. Currently with Toxo, scientists are looking towards inoculation as a first proactive step against the parasite. Shots, 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 everybody. Current treatment is antibiotics. The challenge for the treatment is that it would be pretty difficult to get rid of those cysts in the brain due to that thick wall. That THICK WALL! But in 2010, Yasuhiro Suzuki and his colleagues found that CD8 immune T cells might actually be useful in removing these cysts. Hope! So, should we abandon cats as pets? Flager says no. Apparently, indoor cats don't carry the parasite. And outdoor cats only shed the parasite for a total of three weeks when they're young and just starting to hunt. That's when you should keep everything clean. Wipe down all countertops. Rub your vegetables clean. Avoid unpurified drinking water. Cook your meat well. Clean your meat well. Wash your dick. Wash your legs. How do people not wash their legs? Exfoliate. Self-care. Meditation. Mindfulness. What were we talking about?
That's why I get dogs. I like rabies. <laughs> Probably one day this virus is gonna make us let cats vote. And honestly, I'm ready for a different type of politician. An outsider to the human species. <laughs> the world is ending, no one cares. <laughs>